With the 2023 NFL season coming to a close and the 2024 to 2025 one about to begin, this certified football channel must make a video about my predictions for the upcoming NFL season. So yeah, I'm going to go over every single NFL team and just say what I think about them a bit on how they did last year. And at the end, I'll show you my official sheet that I'm doing, like fantasy football on and stuff about that. So um, yeah, let's get into this here on Christian's Coins of Gaming. Please consider subscribing. Let's get into this. We're going to start out in the AFC. So we're going to be starting out this prediction video with the AFC East. So we're starting out with my first place prediction. I have the Jets. I have them to finish around 9 to 12 wins this season. And I 100% think that this team is overrated. And I'll tell you why. So obviously last season they had a top 5 defense in the league. And Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall were incredible players. But they had Zach Wilson at quarterback. And yeah, Aaron Rodgers was so hyped, which I understand why. But I honestly think... I full-on think that Aaron Rodgers will not be that good this season. Think about it. Yeah, he was so elite for the Packers in 2021, but his last season on the Packers, he wasn't even that good, and he's 40 years old, coming off of an Achilles tear. So I think he will be serviceable, maybe like 15th best quarterback in the league, so like Derek Carr numbers. But that doesn't mean that they're Super Bowl contenders. I think they'll be good in the regular season. I think they'll have the best defense in the league. That's right. I think Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall will be amazing. But I think Aaron Rodgers is just going to be a game manager, which is good. But he's not going to be as good as people are going to say he is. And they're really not going to make a deep playoff run like everyone else is saying. So next up, finishing off second, I have the Dolphins, who I think are going to finish around 11-6 and six with a floor of 8-9 and nine, a ceiling of 12-5. and five. It's going to be the same thing. I believe I have them starting around 6-0, and but December comes around and they're going to collapse and probably have a first-round playoff exit again as long as the Chiefs are around, because these two teams usually have seeds that they're going to play each other in the wild card or divisional round. So yeah, again, I think Tua and the entire offense is going to be immaculate, and I think the defense is going to have some great plays as well, and the coaching is going to be great. I just don't think they're good enough of a team to truly win it all, but they are good enough to win 9, 10, 11 games, so yeah. And finishing in third of this division, but still making the playoffs, I have the Buffalo Bills. And pretty much same story as the Jets and Dolphins. They're not going to make a deep playoff run. They're going to win, I'd say, a bit less than the Dolphins and in, in the Jets have as their ceiling. So I'd say like an average of 10-7, and seven, ceiling of 11-6, floor of 7-10. and 10. And I think Josh Allen is going to play incredible. He's going to rush for tons of yards, throw for a ton of yards, pass for a ton of yards, but throw a lot of picks. But that's all right because he carries this team. Defense, I still think, is going to be very good, but they're missing a lot of offensive pieces and missing some defensive pieces. And I believe Sean McDermott has dementia. He's not a very good coach. But yeah, I just think that they're going to be decent overall. And as I said, make the playoffs, and people are probably going to be like, Bills all the way this year, and they're going to lose to the Chiefs. I've never once thought this team was going to win at all. And finally, finishing in fourth, you got the New England Patriots, which I really don't have much to say with them this year. They're starting Joby, Joby, Jacoby Brissett, and I always like Jacoby Brissett, but I don't think he's going to be very good for them. Yeah, I think a ceiling of 8 and 9 is good if everything goes right, if the defense is still playing great, and if their rookie quarterback actually is able to come out over Jacoby Brissett, because sitting behind him isn't going to do crap, be honest. And I think their floor is going to be 3 and 14. I think they're probably going to finish with the floor, and yeah, this... This team deserves this after being so good for so many years. And now we move on to the AFC North, the toughest and I'd say the best division in all of football this season. And yeah, and first I have the Ravens. I think they're going to have a 14-3 ceiling, which they probably will hit, and a 10-7 and floor. Same story, Lamar Jackson's going to be a lead if he's able to avoid injuries. The running game's going to be great, and the defense is going to be amazing. And hopefully Mark Andrews and Zay Flowers are also going to be able to produce, because they were pretty injured last year, and you know, Zay Flowers fumbled. But yeah, um, not really much to say about them. They're just going to be really good, and they're going to get beat by the Steelers and probably run over the rest of the division, but not easily. Moving on, in second in the AFC North, I have the Cincinnati Bengals, which, um, yeah, this team, like Joe Burrow, gets injured a lot, but I think if they're able to stay healthy, yeah, they can be incredible with a 13-4 and four ceiling, but if injuries get to them yet again, I think an 8-9 and nine floor. Joe Mixon, I don't think losing him is going to be the worst thing in the world. They still have so many elite receivers, and as I just said, Joe Burrow, I really like the coaching, and um, the defense, you know, it's just going to be really good. Like, uh, Troy Hendrickson, he's going to be great. And they were pretty sneaky good secondary last year, too. So I think, overall, this team is going to be really, really good if they're able to avoid injuries, which has been tough the last few seasons. And coming in in third and just missing the playoffs at 9-8, and eight, I have the Cleveland Browns. 
you know, the story of this team, they have Miles Garrett on the defense. They've always really loved his play. So I think the defense is going to be incredible. And on the offense, they have a few good pieces. Hopefully Nick Chubb is able to return to form. But my main problem with them is not only they have a really tough schedule, which is why I think they'll finish off 9-8, and eight, but why would they get rid of Joe Flacco? I'm sorry, but like J- Deshaun Watson is not going to be able to come back. He's just going to keep massaging him more. So, yeah. Um, but... If everything goes right and Deshaun is actually the guy, which he's not, but if they were able to keep Joe Flacco, I'd say 12-5 and five would be a ceiling for them. But they're just not going to be able to hit it because they had some bad choices over the offseason that I really don't like. So I just have to go with about 9-8. and eight. And coming in last place at the division, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers, which finally I think this is the year that winning streak record is going to end. And I think they're going to finish around 8-9. and nine. But who knows, because Mike Tomlin's probably going to be able to pull a rabbit out of his butt and give them a ceiling of 10-7. and seven. So I think possibly if the defense plays well enough, I think that can happen. But, yeah, I have a floor of 6-11. and 11. I just think that, like, on the offense, there's really not much there. And even if T.J. Watt is incredible, and the rest of the defense is very good too, and Tomlin's a great coach, his team keeps declining, and I really don't see much in them. So, yeah, 8-9. and nine. And now entering the AFC South, coming in first place, I have the Houston Texans finishing off with an 8-9 floor and an 11-6 ceiling. Do not kill me, okay? I have reasoning for this. So, yeah, D'Amico Ryan's amazing head coach. The defense has so many great players, and they've added so many new pieces, too. And, yeah, the offense, like C.J. Stroud, Nico Collins, Dalton Schultz, they added, like, running backs and, like, defensive players. So many people that I can't name because they just added so many people. And the team's going to be amazing. Now, why do I have their um, floor and ceiling so low? Here's the reason why, okay? I feel like there's honestly a chance that this team does a sophomore slump. And by that, I mean, remember how the Jaguars were awful? They did that one-year rebuild. They were expected to be so great the next year. Yeah, that's the exact same thing that the Texans are going through. And the Texans are a stronger team of, of that for sure, so I'm not really sure if that's going to happen. But the main reason why I have an 11-6 and six ceiling is that I still think there's a f- there are a few pieces away from being a truly elite team, and their schedule is insanely hard. So even if they only win like the same amount of games as last year, 11 games, they're a lot stronger of a team overall. And coming in second of this AFC South division, I have the Jacksonville Jaguars with a 7-10 floor and and 11-6 ceiling. So yeah, now the Jaguars are being slept on and no one thinks they're good anymore. But come on, the reason for the collapse last season was injuries, injuries, injuries. Trevor Lawrence was playing through an injury, and yeah, it clearly showed. And they were still able to stay in most games and lose to the Titans, but yeah, I I do still think they have a pretty stingy defense. Trevor Lawrence is a great player, and Doug Peterson is a great coach. So, though I do think they'll finish off 9-8 and and just miss the playoffs, most likely, they could be a sneaky good team and return back into contention and actually stay like that this time. And finishing in third, I have the Indianapolis Colts. And yeah, I understand they went 9-8 and last year and just missed out on the playoffs, but I truly think that that wasn't a fluke, definitely not, because I think Shane Steichen's a really good coach, and they have a lot of great pieces. I really like Anthony Richardson as well. Hopefully he's able to stay healthy. But I just don't know. I think they have a tough schedule and like aren't going to be as elite. So I have them finishing around 7-10. and 10. But if Anthony Richardson is that guy and the defense continues being very good, of course, Jonathan Taylor hopefully will return to his first two-season form, then yeah, 10-7 and seven I can definitely see for them. They're just a team that I'm admitting I'm sleeping on because I don't really see them making the playoffs and being on the tier of these AFC teams that are making the playoffs, but if they end up making the playoffs, yeah, I'm 100% wrong. Finally, finishing in last, I have the Titans. This is pretty self-explanatory. I do like some moves that they did in free agency and in the draft, but I don't think Will Levis is the franchise guy. I don't care that they got Calvin Ridley. I think it's a pretty mid-team, and firing Mike Vrabel was not the move. I think he deserves to coach somewhere else and a better team at that. I don't really have much to say about the Titans. They're just, eh. They're probably going to finish off with my floor. And moving on to the final AFC division, we have the AFC West. And coming in first, this is a, is a big surprise, but I have the Chiefs with a 9-8 and floor and a fortune and 3 ceiling. Now, this might be the best team that Patrick Mahomes has ever had around him. They keep improving the defense and finally have some wide receivers in Marquise Brown and a great rookie. And I think Rasheed Rice is going to take another step forward. Travis Kelsey isn't what he once was, but he's still going to be great. And then Chris Jones, Andy Reid's your coach, and just a really solid defense with Nick Bolton. Sure, they lost Willie Gay to the Saints, but that shouldn't be the worst thing in the world. They have a tough schedule, though, so I can see 9-8 and eight as a floor. But even if they do go 9-8 and eight and they still make the playoffs somehow, if they do, they're probably going to end up winning a Super Bowl. I'm just going to say a spoiler right now. This is my Super Bowl pick. 
They're incredible all around, and even if they are weaker in the regular season, we saw what happened last year. And finishing in second, I have the LA Chargers, which they probably will actually finish in third to the Raiders, in my opinion. But, um, yeah, I think they're a really overhyped and overrated team going into the season. Jim Harbaugh is going to be a great coach. He is. And Justin Herbert, I absolutely love. And Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa on the defense, yeah. They're going to have a great D-line. Herbert's going to be incredible, and the coaching is going to be incredible. But I just think Herbert lacks so many pieces this season. They have a pretty hard schedule, and I don't know. I just don't really believe in the team that much, which is why I think if everything goes right, 10-7 and 7 could be a possibility with no playoff success, though. But honestly, I'm leaning closer to a 6-11 and 11 floor, but I'll probably give them like an 8-9 and 9 record, but overrated team for sure. And finishing in third, but possibly second, I have the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, this team has an elite defense. Max Crosby, they got some pieces in free agency. And I just think overall, they're going to take even more of a step forward and be probably, I think, at least a top five defense in the league. As for the offense, Devontae Adams is going to be elite as usual. And I think Gardner Minshew can be decent as well. And if he's able to play like he did in the Colts, yeah, this team will be 9-8, and eight, but they're going to miss the playoffs. But I think they're going to finish around 7-10 and because I don't think Minshew's going to be as good as he was in the Colts last year because I think the offense is weakening year by year. But hey, if they do finish off 9-8, and eight, yay, they're going to get a winning record, but no actually good playoff success. And finishing in last in the division, and my what I think this team is going to be is the first overall pick, but I have the Denver Broncos, and all due respect to Sean Payton, like him and Drew Brees are my legends as an Aints fan, but um... Yeah, there's no talent here. Russell Wilson, I think, was actually pretty decent last season, but now they're without him, and, like, the defense is still pretty darn good, but there's, uh there's, like, no weapons on the team at all, and even the defense, I really don't think is gonna be that good as it was, like, last season. I don't know. I just don't see much of the Broncos at all. They could honestly finish off 2-15. and 15. And we enter the NFC, and we're starting out with the NFC East, because in the AFC, we started out with the AFC East. Finishing in first, I have the Dallas Cowboys, with a 14-3 and ceiling and a 10-7 and floor. Yeah, they did nothing in free agency, as usual. But here's the thing, they still have one of the most loaded rosters in the league that is good for regular season, and also for the playoffs. Yeah, they're not going to do anything in the playoffs, but, like, this is the for the regular season. Dak Prescott is going to be a stat machine again. They have Ezekiel Elliott, so I guess there's that. But um, as for the defense, Micah Parsons incredible. I understand that Duran Bland is going to be out, but hopefully Trayvon Diggs is able to return when Bland is back. I think those are going to be some of the best corners. The defense is going to be elite. Offense has great young tight ends that I like, and C.D. Lamb, of course. I think overall, it's probably a top five roster in the league, but yeah, they're not going to do anything in the playoffs, so really there's no point of the regular season for them. Then, finishing in second, but with more playoff success, I have the Philadelphia Eagles. With a 9-8 and eight floor and 13-4 and four ceiling, which I understand the second half of last season, the Eagles were one of the worst teams we've ever seen. But they still have all the talent there. They got Saquon Barkley, so there's that. So I think if Nick Sirianni is able to start coaching more and the defense is able to just be like they were in the first half of last season, yeah, they can definitely be good. But if they continue to play like they did at the end of last year, they're probably going to finish around 9-8, and eight, or even worse, possibly. But yeah, Jalen Hurts, Saquon Barkley, it's going to be like the best rushing attack in the league, maybe behind the Ravens. And then, of course, you know, Devonta Smith, A.J. Brown, Dallas Gardens are at tight end. But sure, they did end up losing Fletcher Cox and Jason Kelsey, but that shouldn't be too big of a deal. And yeah, I think the defense is going to be great again this year. And overall, the Eagles are just going to be a very solid team that's going to beat up bad opponents. And actually, unlike the Cowboys be good opponents as well, but maybe sometimes lose a close game to them. I think they're going to be great. Coming in in third, you got the Washington Commanders, which, yeah, this team, I think, could go either way. Jaden Daniels, I think he's going to be a great rookie. Like, not an elite one, but I think he'll be good. And this defense, you know, it's not going to be good. No, it's not. But they also got Austin Eckler, so... Overall, I think, yeah, around 4-13 and 13 is going to be where they're at. But if everything goes right, so that means the coaching is great, Jaden Daniels plays amazing, and just all the pieces that they got in the offseason on offense and defense work out, I think 9-8 and eight could be a possibility for this team. That doesn't mean they're going to make the playoffs, but it does mean that they're going to show signs of life. And finishing in last place in the NFC East, I have the New York Giants, which... I think this might be the end of Brian Dable's career if they finish with the floor, which I have at 2-15. Because 
From what we've seen from Daniel Jones in the preseason, he's not going to return to that pre-injury form, and they have no more Saquon Barkley. The defense might still be pretty decent, if, and if the defense does play like they did two seasons ago, and Brian Dable is, is able to kind of return to his coach of the year form, 7-10 could be a possibility, but I don't think, gonna, I don't think they're going to reach it. And starting at the NFC North, I have one of the most dynamic teams finishing in first. I have the Green Bay Packers. And by dynamic, I mean this team could either finish off really good or have a floor. Not like a bad floor or anything, but like I just think it could go like either way pretty dynamic. So that's why like I have a ceiling of 14 and 3 and a floor all the way down at 8 and 9. So yeah, um, this team last year had a great second half of their season and even won a playoff game and almost beat the 49ers, something that Aaron Rodgers could never do. But Jordan Love, I absolutely love him. He's a really great player. And, of course, they signed Josh Jacobs, which I think is going to be a great piece. They have a bunch of really good young receivers, and I think if David Bakhtiari is able to stay healthy, that'll also help. They fired Joe Barry as their defensive coordinator, which is a good choice. I never liked him. And uh, Matt Mafleur is a great head coach, and I think the defense has guys like J.I.R. Alexander and some other great players. So overall, yeah, I think Jordan Love could possibly even win the MVP, and with a bunch of new great pieces, I think this team could do very well or hit a Jaguar-like sophomore slump. We'll have to wait and see. Coming in at second of the NFC North, I have the Detroit Lions. And yeah, you might be thinking, really? Behind the Packers? Well, here's something. Their schedule is really tough, and I think overall they're a tad bit weaker of a team this season than they were last year, but... I think they might actually do better in the playoffs. Yes, that's right. Maybe even NFC champions. But anyways, yeah, I have about a floor of 10-7 and seven, and then a 13-4 and four ceiling. Around an average of 11-6 and six because of that tough schedule. But, like, Jared Goff is going to continue being a great quarterback. The running game's incredible. Amon Ross St. Brown. I think that Sam Laporta is going to be the best tight end in the league. Dan Campbell is probably my favorite head coach in the entire league. And they have some great defensive pieces, like Aiden Hutchinson. They fixed up the secondary a bit. And I think overall, they're one of the best rosters in the league. If they go for less fourth downs and the secondary is able to really improve, I think, yeah, they're probably going to win the Super Bowl. Or at least make it there for the first time in their franchise's history. And coming in at third in this division, I have another really dynamic team, the Chicago Bears, which, of course, they get the first overall pick with Caleb Williams. And they are just a team that is so hyped this year, and that is very reasonable. I'm really excited to see them play, too. Their defense has been getting a lot better with adding a lot of different players, drafting people as well, and they should be a very stingy defense this season. Of course, D.J. Moore was really elite for them last season, and they have like added so many other pieces as well with Keenan Allen and... I think the rushing attack will be great, and overall, I think if, like, you know, they have rookie slumps and, like, people that are unable to really do anything, they could struggle to a 6-11 record and explode maybe next season, but if everything goes right and Caleb Williams is that guy, I think 10-7 and seven could be their ceiling. I think they're going to finish 8-9 to nine wins just because it's a bunch of rookies and a really young team, but who knows? I really am excited to watch the Bears play. And finishing in last place of this division, I have another very big contender for the first overall pick, the Minnesota Vikings, or the Purple Incarnations of Satan. Saints and Packers fans hate them alike. But anyways, so yeah, of course, J.J. McCarthy, awful injury, sad to see him miss his entire rookie season. And even Kevin O'Connell, I feel like he's not the greatest of head coaches in their um, season two seasons ago. Yes, it was the best team they've assembled in quite a while, but I think there was a bit of luck involved there too. Like, I don't care if they got Aaron Jones, they lost some pieces on the defense, and even if they have Justin Jefferson, Sam Darnold's going to be the one throwing them the ball, and they've already had so many struggles with injuries, and of course deaths over the offseason, and that can't carry well good into the team. I think they're going to finish around two wins, possibly even only one. I'm sorry, but like, it's crazy how this team can go from 13 wins two seasons ago to arguably a one-win team. And to start out the NFC South, in first, we have the most overrated team in the NFL and the worst team in the NFL, the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. <sighs> this team is really hyped this season, and I can kind of understand why, but also at the same time, they're probably the most dynamic team in the NFL because at the same time, they have so much talent that they can finish off 12-5, and five, and I think their coach is probably going to win Coach of the Year as I think they will finish off not 12-5, and five, but pretty decent, but also they can be complete Falcon and Falcon out to a 7-10, and 10, maybe even 6-11 and 11 record, but I'm going to keep it at a floor of 7-10. and 10. They're going to win 10-11 to 11 games. But, of course, you sign Kirk Cousins at quarterback, and then you draft a quarterback. Lots of logic there. 
But they have a lot of pieces on offense, like B. John Robinson, who I think is elite. But also, like uh, Kyle Pitts and Drake London, they still need to explode. And if anyone's going to help them do that, it's probably Kirk Cousins. The defense has an elite secondary, and along with signing Matthew Judon, I think the team has so much potential. It's just, along with good coaching and that potential, as I just mentioned, it's just the fact that they might struggle with injuries, and also, like, it's the Falcons. They might find a way to finish off with a lower record. I don't know. There's a lot of talking points to this team, but they could finish off either way, but I'm just going to have them finishing off with around 10 to 11 wins. And finishing in second of the NFC South, I have my New Orleans Saints, or as people like to refer to them as, the Aints. Um, yeah, this team I think is one of like the least dynamic teams after the Falcons. I think they're going to be pretty mediocre, finish around 8-9 and nine to 10-7, and seven, which, honestly, as a Saints fan, I think they could also finish 11-6, and six, but only 8-9 and nine to 10-7. and seven. Derek Carr, the last, like, five weeks of last season, he was incredible. Before that, he was pretty dog water. But um, if he's able to continue that, and I think he's just going to get more used to this offense, I think he'll be able to be pretty good, you know, 30 touchdowns, 10 picks. Decent play. And then I think... Uh, Dennis Allen, yeah, he's not a very good head coach, but he's not awful, and I think their defense is going to be top five in the NFL. They fired Pete Carmichael, which is great for that offense, and hired a Kubiak out of all people. And yeah, Chris Olave is great. Rashid Shahid, those are two of the most underrated wide receivers in the league. Alvin Kamara is going to continue being a good running back. Taysom Hill is elite as well. And yeah, their line is going to be pretty bad. Ryan's Rims, check is out. But their defense, I think Dennis Allen's defensive mind, Cam Jordan, and then along with him, we have like Pete Warner, Demario Davis, Paulson Adebo, and Tyron Matthew, Marshawn Lattimore. Their defense is going to be elite. And you can't forget they signed Chase Young and Willie Gay. So yeah, I think the Saints are going to do pretty good this year. And coming in in third place of the NFC South, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think they're pretty much going to be the same as last year, 6-11-4, and 9-8 finish. I think they're going to finish around 8-9 and nine, though. But yeah, I think Baker Mayfield is going to be good. They're going to have a bad rushing attack. Mike Evans is going to be great as always. And the defense is going to be very good as well. Maybe not as good as last year, but very good. Yeah, the Bucks. I think, just a solid 8-9 win team. And in last place, no surprise here, I have the Carolina Panthers with a floor of 2-15 and and a 5-12 and ceiling. There's, they really didn't do much improvements. I guess Adam Thielen's going to be another reception machine. Bryce Young is going to suck. The defense is going to be okay at best. Yeah, I, I I don't know. There's, like, no pros to their offseason and no really cons to their offseason, but there's a con to the team that they suck. They're probably going to get, like, the second overall pick, though, and I think there could be slight improvement in record. But as an actual team, there might be quite a bit of improvement, but I just don't think that will carry on to as many wins. They're definitely still going to get last in the division by a mile, actually. And in our final division, we have the NFC West. Starting out in first... Again, no surprise here. We have the San Francisco 49ers with an 11 and 6 floor and a 16 and 1 ceiling. That's right. I was looking through their schedule and I actually had them going 16 and 1, but I think because of my record predictions, the seeding wise, they'll be able to rest their starters in the last two weeks. So they're probably going to finish 14 and 3, but you already know it like Kyle Shanahan's an elite head coach unless he's winning by 10 points. And the whole offense, Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, like everyone there that resigned Brandon Ayuk, Brock Purdy's amazing. The offensive line defense is fred warner and nick bosa it's all elite all around as usual they're gonna be incredible and in second i have the los angeles rams which same story sean McVay is gonna be great at coach and they're gonna have a decent defense because i know aaron donald retired we will all miss him watching him kill quarterbacks but like they got two as in the draft that will hopefully make up for at least like 75 percent of him and you have puka nakua cooper cup Kyron Williams, Matthew Stafford in the offense. They're going to win 7-11 to games. I think they're going to go 9-8 and and either make the playoffs or miss. I think them and the Saints are going to be pretty locked up for the 7th and 8th seeds. But yeah, we're going to see what happens to the Rams. It's probably going to be mediocre. Coming in in third, I actually have a pretty big hot take here. I have the Arizona Cardinals with a 5-12 and floor and 9-8 and ceiling. To get everything out of the way, I think this team is going to be so massively improved upon last season. I really like Kyler Murray. He's just going to be great again. And I think James Conner is severely underrated, and Trey McBride. I think those three are going to be incredible. And I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be one of, if not the best, offensive rookies. I think those four are going to combine for one of the league's best offenses. Even if, even if the defense is bad, they're not going to be as bad as last year. So if that offense with those four pieces is as good as I think it will be, which I think is a, honestly an elite offense, in the defense, as long as they're not as bad as last year, even just like one placement up, I think the team can finish up to 9-8. and eight. 
And I think they have pretty decent coaching as well. So, yeah, honestly, for the Cardinals, I can see a 9-8 and finish. I know, it's pretty crazy. And lastly, in our final division and last place spot in that final division, I have the Seattle Seahawks. And yes, it might seem as if I'm very much underrating them, and I might be, but I have a floor of 4-13 and and still of 8-9 and because I think their schedule is pretty hard. And I just think that, yeah, Geno Smith had his whole career revival thing, but he's getting older at this point, and I don't like the offensive line. And even if they have some great young players like Kenneth Walker, who hopefully is able to not get injured this season, and like some good players on the defense as well, I don't know why. I just don't really believe in the Seahawks team. I think they're going to finish off around five to six wins. And that concludes my official NFL 24-25 to season predictions. And here's this little paper sheet that I came out. It just has all the standings and my award predictions in AFC champion and NFC champion and Super Bowl prediction. It's just for my fantasy football and just like kind of just see how I end up on the end of the year. So yeah, that's what it is here. The bolded teams are the teams that I think are making the playoffs. So despite having winning records, you know, the Rams, uh, the Browns, I don't think those teams will make the playoffs. But let's go over my awards quickly. So for MVP, I'm taking Jordan Love. I think the Packers, at least in the regular season, are going to take massive steps forward. Offensive player of the year. I think Christian McCaffrey is going to get it for a second time of the season. And defensive player of the year, another 49er, Nick Bosa. Like, he's been so late for the past few seasons. And the 49ers have a pretty winnable schedule that they can win up to 16 games, as I said. So why not have just him get another defensive player of the year? For offensive rookie of the year, I have Marvin Harrison Jr. Defensive rookie of the year, I have led to Latu. And for comeback player of the year, Aaron Rodgers. Like, I think the Jets are going to be pretty good in the regular season. He just snapped his Achilles. Why not have him for this spot? For man of the year, I'm taking Demario Davis. I love the Saints, and he's been very good. He was in the running for the last few years, so why not just have him win it? And for coach of the year, despite how much I hate the Falcons, I got to take Raheem Morris. So, yeah, now for my champion round predictions, I have in the AFC Championship the Houston Texans versus the Kansas City Chiefs. And who I who do I think will be the AFC champions this season? The Chiefs. And then for my NFC Championship, The Philadelphia Eagles taking on the Detroit Lions. Who is going to take that? The Detroit Lions. So now, with my two conference champions being predicted, who is going to win Super Bowl 59? The Kansas City Chiefs. That's right, I have the Kansas City Chiefs actually blowing out the Lions in what is going to be probably their lone Super Bowl appearance of this era. I love the Lions, and I wish that they would be able to win it, but I really think that the Chiefs are going to get that three-peat. And while we're at it, here's just my overall playoff bracket that I used with this playoff prediction website. It's pretty cool, so just check it out. Um, Yeah, here's what my bracket looks like.